Hey, yo, it's your boy G20, King Sarcasm. Y'all already know what it is, man. Welcome back to NHL 20. Welcome back to our franchise mode here with the Edmonton Oilers. We are turning this motherfucking team around, man. We are turning it around, and it has only taken one season. We are starting year two today. We're going to be doing some simulation, and as you guys can see, if we go to the proposed trade thing, boom! All right, we are a contender. We turned the Edmonton Oilers into a contender in the within a year, basically. So now all we got to do is take them from a contender to a champion. All right, to, like that's what it is. So I fiddle with the lines a little bit before starting, and I just try to get the maximum playing time I could get for our rookie Rask, who is an 81 overall. If you're new here, we drafted him with the second overall pick. We got for missing the playoffs by one single point. That was pretty hilarious. But yes, he's gonna be on the second line. I try to get a, I try to get him as much playing time as I could, without really demoting guys like Drysidle. You know, um, I guess I could do this. Yeah, but that screws up chemistry. So I tried to find a, you know, the right balance. It, he doesn't need to be on the first line either. Yes, he pulled the RV is out here as an 83. As an 83, and he is signed for three years at under $2 million, so that should be huge. And, uh, yeah, so those are our offensive lines. Those are our defensive lines, if you are new here or if you need a reminder. Mm, Evan Bouchard on the first pair as an 81, plus three overall, though, for um, the chemistry. So he he's going to play very well, and, hey, he might grow. He might just grow beyond his top four potential. As far as goalies go, that is the one thing we are lacking in here with uh, Miko Koskinen and Ryan Miller, but... Eh, you know, you gotta... You, we're, we're gonna have to take it step by step here with the Edmonton Oilers. So, what we're gonna do is we are going to start simulating a little bit and uh, see what happens in the sim. Boom, look at that. Getting huge jobs right off the bat. Oh, yes, I like it. 3-0 and start. As I say that, of course we lose, but, you know, I'm liking the way that we're starting the season so far. And about... You know, a month of the way through, I'm going to look at the statisticals for everybody. And we're going to see who's doing well, who's not doing well. Because, I mean, I kind of want to put um, put Rask with McDavid at some point in the season. Maybe not for the entire season, but like for a little bit, a little bit of a stretch. Because Rask has ridiculous shooting attributes. I should I should have showed you guys this. But Rask has a ridiculous... Um, shooting section for his attributes, so putting him with McDavid could go, could could, could do wonders for us. All right, so we are ten four and three, not the greatest here. About a month into the season, McDavid is well over a point per game. We are first in the Pacific though, and let's see here with McDavid. Dry, oh, that is Hoffman. Mike Hoffman has eight goals and twelve assists. As far as Drysidel. 5 and 15. And oh, 8 goals and 4 assists for Rask. Okay, so what if what if we do this? That actually destroys chemistry a little bit. Can we do this? We cannot. Hmm. Oh, that is very not good. Okay, so what if we I don't know, I'm just trying to fiddle around a little bit. That helps the first line. That does hurt the second line though. Is it Neil? Oh, man. If we put Pooley Arvey, he has 9 points in 17 games. I don't want to demote him to the third line. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a little bit of a line change right here. We're going to put Rask on the first line, along with McDavid and Dreisaitl, because Dreisaitl's got a lot of assists. You know, for a sniper, I think he was 5-15. and 15. That's a that's a really assist-heavy spread for Leon Dreisaitl. So we're just going to put Rask there, because he has redonkulous shooting. And we're going to see how it goes. Um, so far, one and one with those new lines. Yeah, it's not looking too great. Oh, there it is. There it is. It's a little bit better. Now, we're going to simulate, in this video, we're going to simulate about to the trade deadline. And while we simulate there, I'm going to try and extend, because this is a big year here. We need to extend one Ryan Nugent Hopkins if we want to keep him. Now, I'm not saying we have to keep him. I'm just saying I would like to keep him. He's an 86 overall, you know, and look at that. 20 points in 23 games on the second line. Mm. 
I would really like to keep him around, man, if we could. He wants a seven-year deal at 7.7. .7. I don't have that much issue with 7.7, .7, but what if we made it a five-year deal? He now wants whatever. Somebody told me, oh, the, the price changes when you change years. I don't really care about... Um, their price changing for years. I'm trying to get him on a contract that's good for me. So that's what we're going to do. 6.9, that is very nice. Um, if we could get that for five years for Nuge, I feel like that would be pretty good. He's going to be our permanent second line center. So if we could get him around there, maybe around seven-ish, uh, you know, for the a shorter term than seven years, because I feel like seven is too long with um with rask coming up because rask is a center we have him at wing right now but he absolutely is a center so once he's you know in that 84 85 range he's probably nugent hopkins accepted damn okay so i did not give him at all what he wanted but he still went ahead and accepted because he loves the oilers look at that 6.9 million that is giggity that is nice and here he is signed with the the club for the next five years and i'm stuttering a little bit here because i we're getting a lot of losses okay there we go there we go is it is just me it might just be me but i feel like whenever we start negotiating contracts um i just end up starting to lose games i don't know what it is but it, it just feels like that's how it goes it usually goes that way but now we are back on the winning track all right so we have a trade offer Kemper, oh, Kemper a third, and Matt Nieto for uh, two seconds. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. We do need goaltending here in Edmonton. I just don't know if Kemper really is the guy. 908 save percentage, forget about it. We do not need that. Don't need that at all. I, I would love to get a goalie, though. Like... I feel like that's all we're missing from being an elite team is just a good goalie. And by good, I mean like maybe like an 86. You know, we don't need na a, like a 95 goalie like a Carey Price. We just need a good starting goalie like 85, 86. I feel like would do the trick like I said. But I just don't know that we're going to get that. I mean, it's it's uh, it's a delicate thing here right now that we're, we're walking with the Oilers. Because we are successful. We just need to be more successful because we want to be successful in the playoffs. You know, you don't just want to make the playoffs. You want to actually do good once you get there. Now, we are losing some games here. So I'm going to go ahead and revert the lines back to what they were with uh, Rask on the second line and Hoffman on the first line. So we're going to do that. Rask right now, 21 goals, 14 assists. That is very good. That's very good, man. In 46 games, you love to see it. What about Mr. Mike Hoffman? Yeah, he's doing well also. What about Evan Bouchard? Evan Bouchard, okay. 16 points plus 20. That's that's pretty good. Plus minus isn't everything, but it um, you know, that's the only metric we have, so that we gotta go off of that. What about our goaltending? I keep saying that's our weakness. 918 is not bad, man. Ryan Miller also giving us a 922 over 12 starts. I, I ain't mad at it. I'm not mad at it at all. What if we were... Uh, what if we were to trade, like, Skinner, Stuart Skinner, and a pick or something for a, a good goalie or a better goalie? This is what we're going to do. We're going to stop the sim two weeks, three weeks before the deadline, and then you guys can let me know how you think we should get a goalie because i feel like that i don't want justin abdul cater hello what is wrong with you what the heck is wrong with you hello that was incredible McNabb and reeves for literally picks listen dog i don't need all that cap trouble you're trying to send my way vegas i'm gonna be good all right i'm gonna be okay now I just realized that I have fucked myself over here by not assigning scouts. That is something I forgot to do. Or maybe I didn't forget and I did it off camera, but I don't know. It's getting a little bit late, so I guess we're going to have to find out once we get there. But yeah, you guys let me know, man, what you think of our Peter Mrazek, huh? For Shiasan and a third. What are, you, what are you offering me here? What kind of, uh, kind of goaltending? 902, huh? I don't think I really want an 80, 
three goalie. You know, like I feel like an 85 is a little bit better. But yeah, I mean, maybe we should keep Skinner, but then again, then again, we did draft an elite goalie or elite potential goalie in the last video, so maybe we don't even need Skinner because by the time he's good, uh, you know, the elite goalie is going to be on his way. So I don't know what we should do here. It's uh, it's a delicate balance. The Ducks want Shias on. That's funny. And now, yes, we're going to stop. We're going to stop because we are two weeks from the trade deadline. We're going to take a look at our... Oh, shit. That's a trade. That is a that is a trade right there. Eric Stahl. Okay. Whatever. Eric Stahl's still doing decent, too. Oh, there you go. Trades are starting to open up, guys. People are starting to make trades. Uh, set, what? What? No. No, I'm good, bro. So we are 31, 20, and 4 here starting the new season. Uh, Connor McDavid has 62 points in 55 games. We're in a divisional playoff spot. Let's just look at what certain players are doing. Mike Hoffman, he's going to get 20 goals, probably 25 by the time the season is over, so that's pretty good. McDavid is his usual dominant self. Dreisaitl not getting nearly as many goals as he usually is, but, I mean, he's still... You know, he's still doing okay. Yeah, he's still shooting 12 over 12%. He's not doing badly. Not doing badly at all, man. Over a point per game, we'll take it. We will absolutely take it. Jesse Pugliarvi, though, at 11 and 11. That is 22 points. I don't know if I necessarily like that. What if we dropped him a line? Okay, we might have to drop him a line here because James Neal has 15 of them things. 15 of them things. I think... Oh, snap. Shiasan's actually doing really well. And what about our boy Tyler Benson? He might actually become the top six forward that he could be. What if we do this? Just for a little bit, you know? Spread the spread the overall around. And what about Rask? Oh, yes! 37 points. Okay. That's a pretty damn good start to your NHL career, man. I, I'm not mad at that. What about um, our boy? Okay, he's slowed down a little bit, uh, just a little bit. Evan Bouchard has, but it's fine. Look at Jake Muzzin, 38 assists. God damn, 46 points in 55 games. That is so, oh, I am okay with that, man. Nurse with seven, seven big apples. We are out here. Uh, both of the second pair is minus, though. All of our defensemen are minus except the first pair. Okay, that's pretty interesting. Um, all right, and what about goaltenders? Goaltenders, Koskinen is still giving us a 915, man, and Miller's giving us a 925. Maybe our goaltending's okay. Like, it's not great, but it's okay. It's That's not bad. That's not a bad save percentage at all. And what about, because we do have some, um, some reinforcements here in the minors in the form of Kyler Yamamoto, who is still a 79 but goddamn, the man has 46 points in 46 games. That is pretty damn good, man. I, I told you guys, getting that first line was going to be huge. So maybe we want to maybe we want to do that um, in the next video. Call up Kyler Yamamoto for his first, um, his first real NHL action. I just don't know where I would slot him in. Uh, maybe we trade Shiasan. Everyone wants Shiasan. That could be a thing. Shiasan and Koskinen and maybe a pick for a better goalie. That could be an idea. And then Yamamoto can just take Shiasan's spot. Because, uh... Oh, shit. That might actually work really well for a third line. So you guys let me know what you think of that, man. That's going to be the end of this video. And I hope you enjoyed it. We're doing well so far with the Edmonton Oilers. We're just trying to do a little bit better. And I hope you enjoyed it, like I said. And if you did, please hook, hook your boy up and punch the like button in the face. Spend the hell out of a comment and subscribe. I'm G20, man. As always, I love you guys. And I'm out this bitch. Peace.